If you can get these three things right, then you are completely ahead of other producers and you will become a successful music producer with thousands of streams and listeners on a relatively short time. In this video, I will take my last 10 years of experience as a music producer and I am going to condense it to three part framework I would follow if I were to become a music producer completely from scratch today. And while first two pillars of this framework are known and followed by many producers, it is actually the last pillar why many music producers fail. Number one, music production. Music production has three backbones, and these are hardware, software, and the knowledge. Many of you, when you start music production, you jump into the hardware and try to buy tons of different things. So which hardware should you buy? Try to minimize the amount of money that you are spending before you're sure that you want that thing. So for the hardware, we have two options. The first one, what I would call bare minimum. If you want to produce today, what you would need? In this case, two things. You will need a computer and you will need monitoring headphones. And monitoring headphones are different from the headphones that you use daily. Monitoring headphones would have more flatter response compared to the, our daily drivers. And if you are using just computer, you have to go for low impedance headphone. And for that, I would actually suggest buy something like Bear Dynamic DT770 with 32 or 80 ohms. If you want to update your gig later on, I would actually suggest for going for 8 ohms, your computer should be still fine to drive it and it won't cost you a fortune. And more importantly, it has relatively bumped low end, so you don't boost your low end too much, which is the biggest problem with the new beginners. Now, you should run this setup at least for a month to figure out if you really want to be a producer. And if you feel like you want to be a producer, then I will suggest actually this expandable minimal option. In this case, purchase an audio interface, connect your headphones there, purchase beginner monitors so you're not always on the headphones and then get a MIDI keyboard so you can play the things and later on this setup will be super easy to expand on. For this software, the only thing that you need to buy is DAW. And here you have tons of different options. I would suggest picking something that has a good amount of tutorials because as a beginner, you are going to watch a lot of tutorials. I use Ableton Live, but there are other DAWs like FL Studio, Logic Pro, Studio One, and so on that has quite a bit of tutorials as well. For the VSTs, don't buy anything. For first three months, I really strongly suggest you buy nothing. I can't stress this enough. The only thing that I would suggest actually getting is Vital VST and using it as your first synthesizer. It's a great free synthesizer and quite easy to use. And from there, once you feel really confident, then you can cherry pick the synthesizers that you want afterwards. For the music production, the most complicated thing is beginners doesn't know where to start. You don't know probably any terms, but I will suggest have a list, a step-by-step -step guide that can help you out what to study next. If you just jump into the YouTube and try to figure out how to produce music, it will be overwhelming. I guarantee you. So you have two options. The first one will be the free and the second one will be the paint. Everybody knows that it is more likely that you will commit to it if you pay for it. But let's start with the free option. Go to my courses, coursesmercurytones.com, go to course curriculum here and you will see that all the different parts that I'm going through in this course. If you don't want to get this course, it's completely fine. You can use this as a guideline. So go through all these different lists and check them up one by one. I need to learn basic music theory, drum programming, sound synthesis, sampling. Take this, copy the title, put it on YouTube, YouTube, probably you will find my own videos or somebody else's videos and watch them and if you feel understand go for the next one and then next one and then next one in that case you have a structured way to learn all the important topics if you want to have everything prepared for you you can take this course your first step they'll do electronic music production i keep the price really low compared to all my other classes i want to keep it as cheap as possible because it's still not sure if you want to become a producer until you really start learning stuff so if you have money take this one if you don't have money don't worry just go through this list and learn everything one by one through the youtube this video is made possible by sound gym if you don't know how to train your ears and become a better producer and musician sound gym is perfect for you Sound Gym gamified the ear training process with really entertaining games. Let me show you. This is called EQ Mirror. First you hear the EQ sound and then you try to replicate it. For example, I get a 96% accurate in this case. And this one is from Compressor Game. So 
they have tons of different games that you can play and learn at the same time. So next time when you're about to play a game, consider Sound Gym instead. The links are in the description below. Number two, content creation. One of the biggest misconceptions with music production is people think that before the internet, music production was just music producing and forgetting about everything else. This cannot be much more far from the truth. I was playing in a band late 90s and during 2000s. We would go out, meet with other band members, try to socialize with the people who were in our genre, try to play bars or the concerts or whatever just to reach the more people. But today, all you need to do is create a short content so that people can find you and listen to what you do. People think content creation takes too much time. You can create content in five minutes and that's all you need to do. And for that, I have created a list for you that I use all the time and those things doesn't really take me more than five minutes oftentimes. You want to be as authentic as possible and because of that use your mobile phone. Don't use an expensive camera or editing software because it will make you spend more time in creation and editing rather than focusing on your music. So these are the things that won't take more than five minutes for you to create. For example, production snippets. Are you making a song that you are really excited? Take off your mobile phone, put yourself in the camera for say, say I'm something like I'm working on this and, and it's sounds super cool. cool. Take a listen and then return your camera to the screen and just record like this. Stop the video here and just note them down. All of them are quite straightforward and you can really make content in five minutes. And remember, if you want people to follow you and create organic relationship with you, you need to give them an opportunity to get to know more about you. And these short contents are really best for you. And once you create those shorts, you can share it on your TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and you can get your music exposed to as many people as possible. It is still good enough. If you are enjoying the video up to now, please consider like and subscribe. Number three, the development plan. This is the part really differentiates a successful producer from a failed producer. The single biggest problem of becoming a music producer is actually committing to become a music producer. For many people, it stays like a wish or dream and they will never take the first step to becoming a producer. Just let you know, I'm not talking from the stomach. I have looked up the research on this one and the latest research from the Ohio State University says that people tend to be more committed to their goals after they share them with someone who they see as higher status or whose opinions they respect. And after you share it, create a development plan. And development plan should consider three different things. Your short term, your mid term and your long term goals. The short term goals should include the things that you want to accomplish in one to three months. This could be I'm going to finish three tracks. I'm going to improve my mixing skills. I'm going to find another producer who I can call up with. Things that you can achieve in one to three months. And you have to update your short term goals every three months. Your mid -term term goals should be slightly bigger. So this could be, I am going to release at least two tracks in a label. I am going to get at least 10,000 plays on Spotify. I'm going to post at least 25 shorts on my social media and so on. So you keep these mid-term goals bigger than your short-term goals, updated at least every year so that you have bigger and bigger goals. And finally, long-term goals should be something that you really aspire to do. For example, I am going to release the label A. At least a track. I'm going to hit an editorial playlist. I'm going to get played by DJ A or B. So this should be a bit more aggressive. They give you motivation to keep working on your tracks to reach that goal. And then once you create your development plan, you should share it with somebody that has a higher status for you. And now because you shared your goals, that person will expect you to fulfill these goals. And that will give you a little bit pressure or motivation to really follow these goals. At least this is what researchers said. I actually do this every year. New year, I take pen and paper and I write down all my goals. And the next year, during the New Year's Eve, I open up my letter and read all the goals that I wrote. And then check out which one I followed. It's really something that I excited to look at every single year. I strongly suggest this. If you want to see more music production related content, take a look at here. I have tons of them.